What is going on guys, Pat in the shop, and tonight I'm gonna to be telling you what hardware, valve springs, seals, retainers, etc., that we're gonna be using on our 355 Help Me Build series when we're using these DNA Performance aluminum cylinder heads, the, the eBay AFR enforcers, whatever you wanna call it. I'll show you what hardware, what springs, uh, what we're gonna outfit these heads with for our 355 here. Let's take a look. So to bring you up to speed if you're unfamiliar with our YouTube 355 here, uh, real quickly, it's basically uh, an 880 roller block and it's a 355 bottom end flat top pistons and I let you guys kind of make the decisions on what we're putting in for some components. What heads we could go with, the camshaft, we end up going with a Summit Racing hydraulic roller camshaft, uh, what intake. And we're just basically using up some parts I've ha I have, for the most part, some of the, the major components uh, and some of the stuff I wanted to try and let you guys kind of make the decisions on what the final product uh, uh, is, what we end up with. There's really, there's no specific um, purpose for this engine right now. Uh, I'm hoping we can do something with it because uh, it's actually turning out to be a pretty nice engine. And when we dyno it, we'll actually find out, you know, how, how nice it really is. But... I've been getting a lot of questions asking what hardware and uh, valve springs I'm using on these um, DNA performance head cause, uh, heads because oftentimes they'll come as a bare casting so guys are looking to outfit their cylinder heads. Uh, so I wanna show you exactly what I've been, uh, I'm gonna be using uh, so you guys can, if you want to re replicate what I'm using. And I'm also gonna give you a quick little lesson on making sure your valve springs are installed correctly because I would not feel great about telling what I'm going to use without giving you any sort of instruction for you first time engine builders. So let's take a peek at what's going on here and we'll dig a little deeper into it. Let's take a look. So now that we're zoomed in a little bit, you guys can probably tell that I went with a beehive spring uh, for this head. This head, uh, Like I said, they do come bare so they it didn't come with any valves or springs or anything like that. So I'm going to go over everything that I use, but I wanted to talk about why I went with a Beehive Spring. If you look at the description on Summit Racing's website, this is a Summit brand camshaft. It's a part number 8803. Uh, it's a hydraulic roller cam, but if you look in the description, it says that this cam was designed to be used with a Beehive Spring. But nowhere does it tell you what spring to use, and also on the cam card, when you buy the cam, doesn't it does not tell you which um, valve spring to use. If you look in the questions and answers section on their website, uh, I, I don't know if it was Summit or someone recommended an LS6 spring. Um, an LS6 spring, a regular LS6 spring, uh, 550 lift is really pushing the limits of that spring. And I think uh, from the specs of this cam, an LS, an LS6 spring, you might just be pushing the limits of that spring in general. So I went with a different spring, not the LS6 spring, as suggested in the questions and answers uh, part of the on the website. So let me go over to the table and I'll show you each component that I have here uh, so you guys can replicate it if you want. For valves, I stuck with the 202 and the 1.6 valve, which is what these heads are advertised at. If you're deciding you wanna make some better power with these heads, uh, go up to a 205 or 208 valve. Honestly, these heads are screaming for it. The bowls and everything set up in the throats for these heads, the, the bigger valve would be better. If you wanna see what the heads flow, go back on a couple videos. Maybe I'll put, if I remember, I'll put the link in the description below of what I actually got uh, these heads to flow with the 202 valve and just some minor porting. Um, then the one six exhaust valve flow is pretty good. So the 202 1.6 valves, 11 30 second stems, but make sure you get the plus 100 stem. And what that means is a hundred thou longer valve. So the stem is actually longer by a hundred thou and we're gonna need that to get our proper installed height. This is very important for the spring setup that will be running. Uh, you will not get your proper installed height if you don't get the longer valve. So make sure you get the longer valves. And again, these are just for reference, these are not the actual valves that I use, but this one is fairly sim similar to the Elgin Pro Stock valve that I use. Nothing fancy, just a regular valve. Uh, if you guys wanna invest in some high-end valves, that's totally up to you, but that's what I end up using. All right, so here's our valve spring package that we're gonna be going with. So at the bottom here, this is what you call your valve spring locator, very important, especially with aluminum heads, you cannot run a, spr a valve spring directly on aluminum heads, but you also gotta make sure your valve springs aren't dancing around, because believe it or not, they will.
The valve seal, uh, just a Viton uh, regular um, flex body valve seal, uh, 530 uh, diameter valve stem. I'll put, give you a part number for that. And our valve spring, this is a, a trick flow valve spring actually, I believe made by PAC. Um, it's a, a 918 valve spring, I'll put the specs in part number up for that. This should work really nicely with this camshaft. It's not too overkill, but it'll be more than enough for this cam. The retainer is a, 17, uh, a CompCam 787-16. Your regular, um, this is like what you'd use on a Vortec head. And then the keepers are just uh, 11 seconds, seven degree hardened keepers. Uh, no, nothing fancy, no offset, just a regular keeper. Now that I showed you what components we're using, you have to do me a favor and you can't exit this video until you understand what installed height is. So don't, you know, we're not going to overcomplicate anything here. It's really simple stuff when you break it down. Some guys get a little bit confused, but I want you to understand that before you go and say, hey, you know, Piss Cutter Pat told me I could put on uh, this stuff and onto my head and it's all going to work hunky dory without checking anything. I do not want that. I don't want you to think that. So I want you to make sure that you're doing your checks and making sure that your heads are set up properly because most valve train failures have to do with unproperly set up valve train components, not checking installed height and just assuming everything is fine. So let's look at this diagram. This is from CompCams. This is an excellent diagram and it kind of shows each component. Uh, in an easy way to understand. So installed height is actually something that we really need to, to, to know when we're fitting valve springs. Um, it's, it's the distance that, that the valve spring actually sees. So from the, where, the, where the spring sits on the head to the bottom of the retainer is your installed height. So in this instance, the, the head is the actual um, valve spring isn't resting on the head, it's going to be resting on our keeper and the bottom of our retainer. So the distance from here to here is actually going to be our installed height. Because when we're going to check our installed on the head, we're going to make sure that retainer in, is in there because as you can see, there's some there's uh, some thickness there. It's about 50 thou thickness. So we got to make sure that we incorporate that when we're checking it because that, that factor right there changes our installed height. Here's a little shot so you guys can get a better, better visual representation of what the installed height is. So from the spring seat here to the bottom of the retainer, that's your installed height. Anyone that, that's doing heads on a regular basis is gonna have a micrometer for checking installed height. Uh, a valve spring micrometer. But and, and another old school me method that works really well, and I've showed this in my LS6 video, and some people laugh at it, is the coat hanger trick, where you precisely grind uh, a piece of coat hanger, and you file it down uh, on sandpaper to you get your exact insole height, and you actually use that to check your insole height. This one is actually at uh, 1.780 for when I installed um, valve springs on Vortec heads, and you can see it's, slightly too small and actually if you wanted to use this you can actually slide a uh, feeler blade in between but if you if i were to ground this grind this at 1.8 inches or, or regrind one at 1.8 inches we can actually make sure that's a snug fit and you actually get a good feel with it it's an old school method it actually works really well if you don't have a um, valve spring micrometer or do you have one to borrow off someone's all right so now that we know what installed height is where we find that what measurement do we actually need to see there. So that's when we're going to refer to the the information that came with our springs. And if you look closely here, you'll say you'll see installed and I'll say on these springs 130 at 1.8 inches. So that's 130 pounds on the seat and when it says on the seat that means with the valve closed at 1.8 inches. So that's the information we need for installed height. So 1.8 inches from this point to this point, which is from the bottom of the retainer to the top of our spring seat. So that's actually what the valve spring sees when it's installed. This valve spring will be 1.8 inches with the valve closed. Okay, for me, when I checked this installed height, which was, luckily, uh, it was right at 1.8 inches, just about. I could have put a small shim and got uh, the exhaust valves a little closer. I could have put a 10 thousandths of an inch or a 15 thousandths of an inch shim uh, on the exhaust valves, but they were really quite close, both the intake and the exhaust to the 1.8 inches. So if you're 
if you're bigger than 1.8 inches, what you can do is you can put valve shims under the spring seat to, to make this distance smaller and bring you closer to the 1.8. But if you're if you're small, like say you're smaller, so you're actually uh, already at say 1.780 as it's written down here. What you got to remember uh, is, which is, you know, it's okay. You can be a little bit under like that, and all it will do is bring up your spring pressure. But if you're running close to what your max lift your springs can handle, it's which again you have to look at your information that came with your uh, your springs. So at one, if installed at 1.8 inches. The open at 1.2, coil bind at 1.140, and typically what you'll find open versus coil bind, usually 50 thou, in this instance 60 thou. So this this measurement, so 1.8 minus 1.2 is 600 thousandths max lift. But you got to remember if you're installing the springs at 1.78 minus 1.2, because this doesn't change, this install height might change. But this won't, so you'll take your um, your installed height minus your open height of 1.2. That will give you your max lift. So that's what I want you guys to, to, to remember. It's okay to go a little bit under. 20,000 is usually what they say um, at, um, with, for your installed height. But you got to remember your max lift comes down. We're not running 600 lift or even 580 lift on this cam. But we could run 600 lift because we installed the springs at 1.8 inches. We have um, we have lots of room there uh, as far as when coming close to coil bind on our springs, which is something you don't want to do. Some performance applications they'll set up their springs so at max lift they're coming right up close to coil bind, and we're not going to do that. This is not this is a street use engine, not a crazy high performance engine, and we're going to stick to our factory specs to try to shoot to the recommended installed height of 1.8. That gives us a, a max open of 1.2, 600 lifts. So there you go. Another important thing to check is your retainer to valve seal clearance. So this distance here, installed height is the distance from the retainer to the spring seat on, on our uh, setup. But the other distance here, which is the bottom of the, the lowest part of the retainer, to the valve seal. You do not want those to come in contact. On this specific setup, I measured uh, with the valve seal installed, we should have enough clearance to run 655 thou. So what you want to take is this distance minus uh, 50 thou. Some there's various um, recommendations, but I so so this is actually 705 thousandths of an inch, but minus the 50 thou give me 0.655. So I have 650 thousandths of a lift, lift, which is max, more than max what our valve springs to handle. So we don't have to worry about that. But again, you have to check this on your specific heads. And you got to remember each component's different. Your spring seats might be a little different. Your retainers might be a little different. And oftentimes, depending on what brand keepers you go with, things can move a little bit as well. So that's why every time you do your heads with your specific parts, you must check your installed height, your valve, uh, or your, sorry, your retainer to valve seal clearance to make sure that you are not gonna have any issues. A Couple little other things to note on these heads that I'm gonna be using. Uh, we're running the CompCams 1.5 roller, aluminum roller rockers. Uh, I put a set of adjustable guide plates on. The push rods end up being uh, uh, 100 thou longer because we're running a 100 thou longer valve. So it's a 7.3 inch push rod. I went with a one piece push rod like I normally do. Uh, these are just regular uh, small block Chevy rocker studs. Um, but I want to show you here why you like why I like adjustable guide plates on these heads because you can actually you can see this is loose the studs loose just touching the guide plate right now but you can actually move the 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 push rod back and forth to make sure that your rocker arm is centered on your uh, your valve stem which is really important you'll find a lot of guys complain about these heads about things being kind of funky so having these adjustable guide plates allows you to make sure that everything's centered individually from each other so you're not kind of having to find a happy medium. There you 
you go guys. I hope that answers a lot of the questions that I've been getting asked about these heads. Um, I know a lot of us were finding spring is sneaking up quick with this parts availability stuff and just having to try to track stuff down and my I know personally my projects have been snack, stacking up but things are finally starting to roll in so I still do plan on dynoing this thing well I do have I pretty much have everything where you're gonna get it done um, I do I'm hoping for to do something cool I don't know if it's all gonna work out so I'm not gonna tell you what I'm gonna plan on doing with the dyno with this thing uh, but either way it's getting dynoed I did some intake porting uh, in comparison on some uh, and another intake and a few other intakes so the There'll be a video about that, but we're gonna button this thing up and then plan on getting it on the dyno and find out what it makes. Uh, so if you guys are trying to replicate it, you guys will have an idea of how much power you're gonna be making. Uh, so if you enjoy my content, please hit that subscribe button. Honestly, it means a lot to me and I appreciate uh, you, the viewers that are constantly looking at my videos and uh, making comments and being uh, just great dude. So appreciate it, stay safe out there. Thanks guys.